Hello and welcome to another version of Daily Devotions, as this week we talk about humility. Back in a church I served uh, in Michigan, we talked about there was, there was a guy who, um, just a, you know, it's a, a story in that life of that church, who had served and was behind the scenes, had uh, served at the soup kitchen, who had, you know, helped with arranging the, the things for the vestments on Sunday morning. Just, you know, kind of an Andrew type person, always behind the scenes in humility, never wanted the spotlight. And then after 50 years with the church, the church decided at a banquet to honor him as the most humble amongst those in the church. And they gave him a badge that said, the humblest amongst us, which he proudly wore to church the next Sunday, uh, the humblest award. And they took it away from him for being too arrogant. Now, um, it reminds me, you know, that sometimes when we talk about humility, it's that fine line between being servants of God and wanting recognition. You know, you come around a church and people say, well, that's my pew because my family donated to me, or there's a plaque on the elevator. This tree belongs to us. Now, it was in memory, perhaps, of somebody, but sometimes folks get very territorial, and the line between recognition this is from my family or in honor of so-and-so becomes this is mine instead of God's. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> I remember I was serving a church of my first church, very traditional church, and a young couple came with their two boys. Uh, these kids were knee-high to the grasshopper, maybe three or four years old, kind of squirming around. And a, a gentleman walked in, <clears throat> longtime church member, three, third generation of immigrant church member. And he came over to them and they said, oh, hi, how are you? Because he was looking down at them. And he said, I just want you to know you're in my pew. And he just stood there. And they laughed and they, they said, oh, well, we'll, uh, you know, we, we'll stand up. And can. He's like, no, no, you're, you're sitting in my seat. Now these people, I don't know if they've been to church or not, but they, they got up and they moved over. And then by the time the announcements were done, they had left. Somebody told me about it. And I thought, the chutzpah of somebody to say to somebody, you know, you, on the one hand you want to say, ah, we want new visitors, we need young families, we need to grow the church. And on the other hand, you, like the soldiers at the foot of the cross, are rolling dice to say, this belongs to me. This is my spot, my choir chair or robe, my, I bought this pulpit. How dare you preach that kind of sermon from it? Those stained glass windows are from my great, great grandfather. And you're not going to do anything without my say so. Time out here. Aren't we following Jesus? Are we dividing up the kingdom in our own little fiefdoms of greatness? Are we James and John saying, hey, I want to sit at your right and left hand. That's my seat, my seat. Are we saying, where would you have us to go, Lord? What would you have us to do? Jesus might say, can you really drink this cup? I see a lot of squabbling over the scraps. Hmm. Well, thank God that's about my old church and not, not any churches that you and I know. Or is it? It's easy for us to get territorial, to think that we own God's message instead of to be the bearers of it. Maybe sometimes God needs to remind us, cut us down in our pride a little bit so that we remember we follow one who rode into Jerusalem humble as a servant on a donkey.